This week in the field, your questions have come in. I've got some answers for you. It's a Q&A episode. Hey everyone, I'm Scott Davenport. Welcome to In the Field. Thanks for joining me. Today is a Q&A episode. If you've got photo questions, I'd love to hear from you. You can contact me directly through my website, comments on the video, Twitter, Instagram, however you'd like to get a hold of me. I'm in a bunch of different places. And uh, so today I'm going to cover a bunch of different questions that have to do with the field side of landscape photography. If you've watched this channel long enough, you know that I kind of have a holistic approach. There's things we do in the field. There's things we do in post-processing. There's things we do even before going into the field, doing some planning and so forth. All those things come together. Today we're going to talk about a few field questions that have come in over the last couple of weeks. So let's get into it. First question's from Jim and he asks, I've been shooting on a humid day and the images I'm getting back are a little bit soft. A little context, uh, Jim is in a uh, humid part of the United States, I believe. And uh, he was with another photographer and they both experienced the same type of thing. They were getting out of the car, letting their camera acclimate to the uh, temperature conditions, but still their their images were a little bit soft. And uh, the the answer there is, I think that part of that has to be expected. Um, You know, humidity is, you know, water in the air. So it's similar to fog or mist or a spray or anything else that might be around a light rain. And as you have a longer distance between you and your subject, uh, if I remember correctly, Jim was shooting some wildlife too. So assuming you're, you're a little bit farther away using a longer lens, there's going to be some diffraction of light in the air because of that moisture. And that can have a resulting softening effect on the images. I don't know of a good way to combat that. It's just something that you know, is a uh, is a reality when there is some type of substance in the air. I mean, it could even be dust or haze, but anything that's going to prevent uh, you know crisp, clear air. Um, yeah, what comes to mind is uh, often when folks that shoot astrophotography they want to shoot in the winter time because the, the the colder, crisper air it's usually a little bit. Uh, cleaner um, or shooting right after a rain where at least where I live in the uh, Southern California, a lot of dust in the air. It's kind of like uh, mother nature blinks. And then, you know, for a moment or two, the atmosphere is cleaner because all the dust has been washed out of the air. So Jim, um, sorry, I don't have a solution for humidity for you, but hopefully that helps you out. The next few questions came out of a workshop I had in July. And so let me run down a, a few of them. The first one is what is long exposure noise reduction and why do I want to use it? Okay, so your camera may have this setting. You might see it as long exposure NR. The NR is noise reduction. And so when we have our cameras open longer and our sensors are taking, you know, a one minute, two minute, three minute exposures, uh, the sensors get hot and the sensors can get uh, like small pixelated spots on them that, you know, blow out and you just don't get the data on that particular point. And so what long Uh, exposure noise reduction tries to do is after your shot's finished, the camera will then kind of take a a reading of the sensor and try to find those spots that have overheated and then apply that to your image afterwards so that it can remove some of these pixelated spots of noise. Now, um, I don't like it at all. I don't like the noise reduction feature for long exposures for, for two reasons. Number one, it doubles the amount of time you're going to need to take your exposure. So let's say you've got a three minute exposure and then three minutes are done, you capture the photo. The camera is then going to sit around for another three minutes measuring and reading that sensor so it can capture the information it thinks is correct to remove any of those spots of noise. So if you're shooting in golden hour, you know, you're burning daylight at that point. Uh, you know, it's, you're doubling the amount of time. The second problem that I have with it is usually you need to use the special software that came with your camera. And usually these are not very good pieces of software, whether it be Canon, Nikon, Sony, what have you. Uh, It's not something that gets uh, applied with the raw file by things like Lightroom or Capture One or Aperture and so forth. So you've got to go through some additional steps to take whatever advantage there might have been from that long exposure noise reduction your camera did and apply it. So I tend just to never bother turning it on. Um, the fact that it just doubles the amount of time it takes for me to uh, be able to take my next photo, uh, that in and of itself is annoying enough. And you know the noise reduction tools that we have, uh, whether it be Lightroom, 
on one. Um, what else you've got? You got Noiseless from Mac Fun. There's uh, with Define from Nick. There's a whole bunch of Noise Ninja comes to mind. Those all do a good job. And so I say, do your noise reduction after the fact with one of those tools. Next one is, do you set the aspect ratio in your camera? And if so, what do you set it to? So many of our cameras offer different aspect ratios. You know, more common ones are you know three by two or sixteen by nine for that HD, you know, wide angle type look or wide screen look, I should say. Uh, the, the answer is I, I don't I don't play with those. I leave it set to the default, which is three by two for for my Nikon and for my Sony. And if I want a different aspect ratio, I'll crop after the fact using the Lightroom or something like that. Uh, in the event that I'm, you know, there are occasions I, I will think of a certain aspect ratio when I'm composing. Oftentimes that's for a 16 by nine, uh, especially if like the sky is particularly boring um, or I'm having trouble getting a foreground element. There's usually etchings or at least overlays in your camera that will show you those different aspect ratios. And so you can kind of compose with that in mind, but I don't bother flipping around and changing the aspect ratio in the camera. Uh, it, to me, it's one more setting that I would need to remember to change back if I touched. And with uh, you know, you know non-destructive crops, it's just as easy to do in post-processing. Last question is, what focus mode do you use and why? I have a very deep, rich answer to this one. I've got a blog post that talks about a whole bunch of things focus-related for shooting landscapes. And one of them is your focus mode. And to, you know, the brief answer on that is focus modes can go from like very wide, like the entire sensor, and then they can get into like a group or uh, sometimes you have columns depending on the type of camera you have, or then down to a small, and I'll call it a point, but it's like a small area, the smallest area you can have. I shoot with the smallest area possible because I'm a landscape shooter. My landscape isn't moving. That's the best mode for me. Take a look at the blog post and you'll see all the details on that plus a bunch of other focusing tips. And that wraps it up for this week in the field. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, tell a friend, share this with your social media channels. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport and happy shooting.